So today we're going to take a look at an introduction to different types of malware provided by Cyber Challenge, Cybersecurity Challenge UK and this activity is a simulation of three different types of malware that have infected machines in recent years. There are millions of cyber attacks every day and learning how malware operates and what effects it can have is really important. This activity is designed in partnership with PricewaterhouseCoopers and we'll now click to continue. So our operating system is loading, it is logging us in now and this demonstration will guide through a simulated ransomware attack. Before activating the malware take a look through the documents and programs on this simulated desktop environment. First double click on the documents folder and look through some of the text and image files. So if we go to the documents folder and open it we've got Mr Meow, let's have a look, oh, nice cat. We've got LOL, this person clearly loves cat images. We've got Funny, yep, another cat, and we've got a list. Is this going to be of cats? No, shopping list. So we've got all files there that we can see and use. So we'll press continue now. So we're going to have a look at ransomware first, the WannaCry virus. This is the virus that hit and took down large parts of the NHS a few years ago. And the WannaCry virus, like a lot of malware, is disguised as a legitimate program in order to trick users into executing it. So they do need you to execute a ransomware file to make it active. In this case, a program on the desktop appears to be a game, but is in fact a copy of the virus. Totally legit game over here. Run it now to see the effects of executing malware on this simulated system. So we'll close down the file and folder. Let's double click to run it. Uh oh. Oops, your files have been encrypted. Your documents, photos, videos and other files are now encrypted and no longer accessible. Don't bother trying to fix this. Only our decryption service will help. We guarantee that you can fully recover all your files safely and easily, but you don't have much time. You can recover your files if you send $300 worth of Bitcoin to us. You have three days to make this payment, after which the price will double. Pay within seven days or your files will be lost forever. With scary countdowns to put pressure on us to make the payment. So if we press continue now that we've run it files are now encrypted so the user is presented with a message clearly warning them that their files are now inaccessible including the worrying countdown timer that is there to pressure you into doing something that you will later regret uh, they are invited to pay the perpetrators through cryptocurrency in order to decrypt the files they want to use cryptocurrency because it is untraceable so they will not be able to be prosecuted for this activity very easily at least and this is known as ransomware try to open one of the files in the documents folders now to see the effects so if we double click on documents we can see that the file extensions have been changed to dot cry these used to be dot jpeg and dot txt respectfully and now if we click on mr meow we get file contents encrypted so all our documents on the system are now encrypted there's no way we can access them so the warnings that we got over here have actually been followed through on our files are now encrypted so we're going to check the programs now this kind of ransomware only affects some files programs on the system will usually run as normal try running the calculator program now to demonstrate this so if we move this window over here a bit we can see the calculator on the desktop and if we run this do a simple calculation we can see it's still working because 4 times 4 is 16 So we've got some questions here. So what type of malware is this? It's definitely ransomware. Although they're asking for Bitcoin, a Bitcoin miner is actually a legitimate activity where you can use a computer to mine Bitcoins by solving mathematical calculations. And it's not spyware or adware. Spyware would steal information from your computer. The information here hasn't been stolen. It has been encrypted but left with you. And adware is where it pops up with advertisements for a variety of things, um, which again, it's not doing. The only thing it's advertising is the link to pay them money. Uh, what is the malware doing to the system? It might slow down the system, but not significantly. It is certainly encrypting many files. It, it's not powering off the computer because we could still use it. And it's not stealing our passwords. It's not stolen anything. It is encrypted it, making it unusable to us. So is the system still usable by the owner? Partially. 
As we saw, we could still use the calculator, but we couldn't access any of our files. And should a company infected with this malware pay the ransom? No, absolutely not. Never, never. So if we press continue, we go on to our next piece of malware, which is a Trojan horse. So introduction, a Trojan.Bitcoin miner is a computer infection that silently runs on your computer while using your CPU or GPU resources to mine for digital currencies. Symptoms include over usage of CPU and GPU, overheating of the system, drastic slowdown of the system, sustained mining could damage hardware. The effects of this type of malware will not be immediately obvious. The malware runs automatically in the background while the operating system runs mostly as normal. Try double clicking the documents icon to see if there, you notice any subtle changes in behavior. So with this here, Bitcoin mining can be a legitimate activity if you're doing it for yourself on your own computer. Nowadays, it is really hard to get significant amounts of Bitcoin due to the complex calculations required and the comparative speed of computer system needed but there are trojans which go on the system to get thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands even millions of computers are working for one person so it slows it down drastically so if you double click on documents now it's taking a little longer to respond the system is going slower than it went before so if we continue now the folder took longer to open than it did in the previous example. The Bitcoin miner is slowing down the computer by taking up lots of its processing power. For a more clear demonstration on this, let load up a game on the desktop lasers in space. So a game will take a lot more processor power than just opening documents and files. So if we close that, so there's nothing using the resources apart from the malware, of course. Double click lasers in space. Okay, we have got the game here, and as you can see, we're trying to play the game, but it is extremely laggy. We've lost the life there because it's very hard to respond in time because the game isn't actually responding as we would expect. Running the game clearly demonstrates the effects of this kind of malware. It will slow down the operation of any program, making the system difficult and frustrating to use. This kind of malware can be very difficult to detect. As we can see, there are no outward signs on the computer that this malware is running at all. What we can do is check the processes though. This is the task manager which is available in Windows. So if we open the task manager and take a look at the process the system is running, see if you can spot the process that is causing the problem. Look through the list of processes and you'll see that one of them is using up most of the system's CPU power. Click the end button next to the process to terminate it and stop it from slowing down the computer. So if we go to task manager, double click it, took a little while to open up. Uh, we can see here that we have got the system using a fairly low amount of spool input. We've got something called BM. We've got services, which is using the most RAM, but it does look legitimate to the system. This thing called BM, though, no idea what it is. And the big difference when we're not looking at the RAM is if we look at the CPU, BM is using between 79, 78, and 86% of the entire CPU of the system. So that is clearly where our problem lies. So if we click end next to that, we will recover that processing power. As we can see now, the CPU is barely being touched by any of the remaining processes. So our speed is now restored because we've managed to close down the Bitcoin miner Trojan and run the game again and see if you we'll see that the slowdown has stopped however this hasn't removed the threat we've stopped the threat for now but we've not actually removed it from the system we've simply stopped it running it will load again the next time the system is started in order to remove it double click the computer icon then the program manager before we do that let's test our lasers in space game again and as you can see now it is responding as expected albeit it appears that i'm not that much better at the game oh there we go last life we've got a bit of an extra boost here now oh I wonder how high we can get so as you can see the game is responding normally it's running at an appropriate speed and that does actually make it a lot more playable than it was before 
and we got up to 4,000 this time. Game's certainly a lot more fun. So if we go back to looking to remove this so it doesn't start up next time, uh, we'll need to go to the computer icon, then the program manager, click the uninstall button next to the BM item on the list of programs to remove the threat permanently. So if we go into computer and then the program manager, um, and we can see BM is there. All the others are legitimate programs that we use, our game, our web browser, calculator, image viewer, and text reader, but BM is not legitimate. We certainly don't want to click run again because that will start eating all the system resources. We want to click on uninstall. Are you sure you want to uninstall BM? Yes, absolutely. Takes a little time to uninstall, but we've got rid of the Trojan off the system. Uh, this is a simplified demonstration on a real computer. The removal process can be significantly more involved and it might involve us getting an anti-malware solution. So if we press continue, we'll go on to our final, oh, sorry, on to our second lot of questions. How is the malware affecting the computer? It's slowing down significantly as we saw. Um, what can we use to see the resources being used by this malware? The task manager. What type of malware is this? It is a Bitcoin miner, not a legitimate one, something that somebody's put on our computer. And is the system still usable by the owner? Again, it is partially usable. So now we'll go on to our final piece of malware. And in this demonstration, there are going to be two machines we're going to look at and use. One is the victim's computer, which we're currently on now, and the other is the attacker's computer. The attacker has exploited the vulnerability in the victim's computer to gain access to it in order to set up a keylogger to track all of the keystrokes the victim does and then use a rootkit to hide the presence of the keylogger and itself. So we've got malware on there tracking everything we type and the rootkit, its purpose is to protect the keylogger from being removed. Obviously, if we remove the keylogger, as we saw in the last Trojan example, that would stop the attack happening. This type of attack allows an attacker to have continuous access to the victim's computer without being noticed by the victim. So you enter anything into your keyboard, including usernames and passwords, and the attacker will get a copy of that. At this point, the victim's computer is running normally and nothing untoward is going on. If we run the task manager and look at the processes running, we'll do that now. These are all valid processes. There's nothing really eating up the CPU. Memory usage is fine. The computer is running at normal speed. Now, if we double click the computer icon and then into the C drive and then into the system folder, the files in there are all standard files on the Windows system. Config.sys, boot.ini, io.sys, auto, exe, c dot bat. Um, after that, we're going to click on the button that appears in the bottom right to switch to the attacker's computer, which is down here. So we're going to switch over to see what the attacker is seeing. We've now got a terminal, also called the command prompt in Windows, and at this point the victim's computer is running normally and nothing untoward is going on. Run the task manager and look at the processes running. These are all valid system processes. We've already done that, we've already done that, and we have already done that. So, the attacker's computer is running a different operating system which uses a text-based command line interface. At this point, the attacker has already exploited the weakness in the victim's computer in order to gain root access, which is administrator access to the computer. Click the command below to enter it into the terminal. It will show the current directory on the victim's computer. So we enter pwd, and it's showing that we are in programs on the computer. pwd means print working directory. So if we press continue, Click on the command below to go to the system folder on the victim's machine. We've obviously seen that is normal on the victim's machine for now. So if we enter that, we'll change into the system folder now in the C drive. And if we click on the command below to show a list of files in the system folder on the victim's machine, ls, which also means list structure, we can see the files that we previously saw using the graphical interface on the victim's computer. If we click on the command below to upload the rootkit program onto the victim's computer, this is a second stage of the attack where we can protect our exploit. So we've uploaded that to the computer, it's now on the victim's computer. And click on the command below to upload the keylogger program onto the victim's machine. So this is the main part of the attack. Now that we've got the keylogger protected by the rootkit, 
we've uploaded the keylogger successfully. And if we click on the command below to show the files in the victim system folder again, the two uploaded programs now visible in the victim system directory. So if we list the structure again, we can see rootkit.exe and keylogger.exe. These would or should be visible on the system under normal circumstances. Now we're going to take a look at the victim's computer and see the files that have been added. Click the button in the bottom right to switch back to the victim's computer. So we're going to switch back to the victim's computer. Then we're going to double click on the computer icon on the desktop and then into the C drive again and the system folder where we see the two files uploaded. Now you might be thinking, well, you did say that one here was to protect the other. If we can just see them, we can delete them. Remember, neither of these have been operated yet. So they're not actually running on the system, but they are now present on the system. The user of this computer will not be aware of any of this going on unless they happen to be watching the directory as it occurs. Most people will never go into the system or the Windows folder ever. So the chance of this being detected at this early stage is remote unless you've got anti-malware on your computer which can detect changes to folders, particularly key system folders. If we return to the attacker's computer now, so we go down to switch to attacker and we click on the command below to show a list of running processes currently running on the victim's machines. We're going to enter PS. We've got the normal processes that we saw before running system networking services, spool SV and input manager. If we press continue now and we click on the command below, we're going to start up the keylogger program on the victim's computer. So we're actually going to make the program we uploaded start to run. Process 124 is created. It has been started successfully. Now, if we check the process again, we can see the keylogger there is running under process 124. If we switch back to the victim's computer now and we run the task manager, this should also be visible to the victim now. We've got keylogger there. It's not using a lot of CPU or a lot of RAM. Remember, for a keylogger, the desired effect isn't to overwhelm the system, it's to sit there silently in the background, so we don't want to disrupt the use of the computer. And the keylogger process now shows in the list of running processes. If we load the Chilcat web browser program on the desktop and type in the following username and password to the bank login page that appears, so we're going to go on the Chilcat web browser. Honest bank login, we're at our actual bank's website, this isn't the spoof website. And if we enter now the username and the password, just as we normally do, as you can see, we can't see the password on the screen. So it's not like the screen is being recorded. Uh, if we double click on the computer icon on the desktop and go back into the C drive and then into the system folder and we open log.txt, this is a new file that's appeared. So we had our original system files on the top, our two pieces of malware, and now we've got this new file which seems to be created. And if we open that up, we can see that's our username and that's our password. It hasn't been uh, hashed with stars so that we can't see it. That is the actual text that we entered. So if we switch now back to the attacker computer, and if we click on the command below, we can show the contents of the log file, which we've just seen on the victim's computer. Obviously the attacker now needs to see it. And if we click on that, we've got an exact output of what is in that file. If we press continue, the attacker needs to hide the process from the task manager on the victim's computer, because just like we saw with the Trojan, if they can see it, they can end it and stop the attack prematurely, hopefully before any damage is done, um, so that they won't be able to see that the malware has been deployed. This is where the rootkit comes in, so that we've not used up until now. Um, a rootkit is a piece of software that can be used maliciously to enable access to a computer or areas of its software that is not otherwise accessed accessible or allowed. So we can use that to manipulate how some of the standard system processes are working. It can hide itself, so therefore prevent itself being ended, because if we did that, the system would start returning to normal and the task manager would work as normal. And the existence of other software that might also be running, so we can run the rootkit not only to hide itself, but to hide um, the keylogger on the system. So if we execute the command to run the rootkit program now, Process 263 has been created. 
and if we run the list of processes again we can see now that we've got the processes that run at the beginning the text reader because we opened up the log file the web browser there we got the key logger that we started and now also the root kit if we click on the command below to use the root kit to hide the key logger process from the process list so we're going to hide process 124 it's now hidden and then if we also hide the root kit itself so the root kit can protect itself that is now hidden now if we look at the process list on the attacker's computer we can see there both pieces of malware the keylogger and root kit that were there are now hidden they're hidden but they are still running so if we return to the victim's computer just to verify it on their side and go on to the task manager which if we double click we can see now even though the keylog and the rootkit are running we can't actually see them we've got the programs we've run so the system outwardly appears to be running normally and all the normal system services that were running with the operating system if we now open the chillcat web browser again and type in these login details to a new website so we're not aware we can't even see it's running this time even if we did check so we're going to have a look at our slipper site again a legitimate site we are not being fished here and we enter in our username and then we enter in our password as you can see the password is hidden again when we're entering it and if we double click on the computer icon and then go to the c drive and then the system folder we can open this log file again and as we can see that's our original log from our banking details but now we also have the log from the slipper site added there as well to prove that the key logger is still running the attacker can also continue to read the log.txt file from their machine just as we showed previously so in this malware attack the computer is operating normally in the sense that it doesn't outwardly appear to be broken however an attacker secretly has access to our machine then deliberately not being destructive by powering off the computer encrypting files or deleting them so that we don't notice it's happening the type of malware that's being used here is a keylogger and a rootkit a keylogger to track your keystrokes onto the computer and a rootkit to hide the existence of both the keylogger and the rootkit the system is still usable by the owner completely and what could the attacker do with the control of the victim's computer they could steal login data they could then they could um use the computer in botnets potentially although that can to attack other computers they can certainly monitor the user activity they can certainly install more malware now because they've already breached the system they could end up stealing money and if they install more malware they could modify files so for the final question what should you do if a computer is affected by malware we can choose them as we think so install and fully update antivirus software that can scan your computer that is an absolute must report any cyber crime to action fraud website in the uk absolutely send examples of suspicious files to friends via email to check them absolutely not you can end up infecting their computer and other systems and become part of the attack however innocently ignore it and hope it goes away it won't go away don't ignore it you need to take urgent action download tools online that claim they remove malware no go to a trusted antivirus software vendor somewhere like malware by its avg someone that is known and trusted install backups of any data that has been lost absolutely after you have cleaned the system um, you can certainly contact a professional to help to remove malware if you're not sure how to do it do not pay any ransoms as straight away or ever it may not even end the attack and you may just lose money as well as funding crime educate yourself more on malware and how it can get onto your computer just like you have done in this video move all your system files into one folder to keep them tidy no windows needs them in certain places rather than moving files to try to hide them which you won't be able to do run and install antivirus and anti-malware software that can scan your computer Things like malware bytes come with a premium functionality that also track the computer in real time which certainly would have thwarted any of these attacks even if you did accidentally try to execute it. 
So, if we have a look, we scored 22 out of 22 on the quiz here. We did correctly identify all the malware there and the effects on the system, as well as the correct answers for dealing with a malware infection. So, if we now continue, we've seen that we've learned a lot about malware. Hopefully, you have got 22 out of 22 as well. Uh, these instances of malware have been simulated to show you how a few examples of malware operate and affect your systems. These are real examples, real things that happen to systems. Real malware can get into your computer systems in a variety of ways via email attachments and links. Don't open up any attachments or links from tr uh, senders that you don't trust. Infected malware systems can actually turn around and affect how USB sticks and CDs can introduce these to the system. Third party or unofficial software only go to trusted vendors. Compromise web pages. They might be legitimate web pages, but if they've been hacked. They can do things called drive-bys, which end up downloading software onto your computer to execute. Here are a few tips on how to better protect yourself against malware. Keep all your software up to date. Install patches and updates whenever available. Run regular antivirus scans and have background antivirus protection on. Ensure your firewall is turned on. Don't download suspicious email attachments or click on suspicious links in emails. Don't put any removable media into your machine that you don't fully trust. Or even better at the moment, just don't put removable media into your machine. With the advent of cloud systems like OneDrive and Dropbox, there's really no need to use it anymore. Always scan any removable devices for using and turn off the auto run setting so that malware that does get infected doesn't automatically get opened. Don't download any software from non-reputable sites. Ensure your email spam filters are up to date and turned on and make regular backups of your important data. That's everything for now. That's everything for now. But do make sure that you stay tuned for more anti-malware videos and more cybersecurity tips. Hope that helps. Don't forget to like and subscribe.